Hi everybody, Phil here. Finally made it back to the church for the second half of the St. Olaf Church organ crawl. We're at St. Olaf Lutheran Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And this is a part of the organ system that people don't usually see. And that is the mechanical part. The motors, the generator, the main blower, and what have you. So, Pastor Dale here and organist Ed Enstrom. Pastor, if you'll take the camera for me, I want to describe how everything works. We'll start with the main motor. This is a 220 volt single phase motor. It was installed recently, having been recently rebuilt. And the reason that it was rebuilt was there were shorts, shorts in the motor windings causing a circuit breaker to trip. And we'll get more into that story later. Now in order to keep this whole system quiet, it's coupled to the big squirrel cage blower with leather straps. These leather straps isolate the vibration from the motor to the blower shaft. There is a natural noise and a slight vibration from the motor that will carry into the blower system and eventually make its way through the wind up into the sanctuary. You can hear it, you can feel it in the building. Now, what happened recently was this motor developed shorts in the windings. And the story goes, and I'm going to let the pastor tell you that from now on, so I'm going to hand the, he's going to hand me the camera, and I'm going to let him describe this situation. Go ahead. What, what brought all this pool cue thing on in the first okay. place? Okay. For many years, when I would, after I was here, we didn't do any service on the organ. That was a mistake. It needed service. And one day during our Easter uh, uh, service uh, concert, actually, it was during a concert, and we got to the, to the postlude. We were lucked out there. We were on the postlude with a full, full piece band up in the balcony, and all of a sudden the organ cut out. End of concert. So, uh, they asked me if I could come down and see what was wrong with the motor. So I came down here and I took this panel off. And I now don't mind you, I'd never been here before. And I look down in here and I see a fuse box. Across there I see a fuse box. And I thought, well, it probably blew a fuse. So I will simply reach across this motor and put the fuse in. So, yep, that certainly was it. And lo and behold, inside of the, the box... Side. Move over to the side while you're pointing. Okay, yeah, inside of the box, they had a spare fuse. So I took the fuse and I put it back into the box and you can imagine what happened. Your phone rang. The motor started up. Let me kill the phone. The motor started up when I am leaning over here with my vestments on, with my cincture here, and I almost got caught in this spinning um, motor. So I backed out very carefully, and Got out of there, and just thank God for taking care of me, just like God takes care of babies, drunks, and stupid pastors. <laughs> well, I fit into the baby drunk category. <laughs> okay. And and uh, so then I, I got a hold of John Newman, our electrician, and he came over and he took a look at it. He said, well, we have to make sure this never happens again. You're not the last 
stupid pastor that's going to be here. So he, uh, John then, he said, first thing we need to do is we need to put a switch on the outside of the organ. He said, I know you got a switch up on the organ, two floors up, but you need one right down here where you can turn this organ off before you open up the panel and go in there. And also, he said, another thing you need is a light. I don't know how you could have found anything in there without a light. So, John installed this, and then uh, he also installed this back door here so we could get back to the generator, which we had no way to access before. Uh, that generator there develops DC power for, uh, for the organ motor. Okay, let me stop then, you there for a minute, Pastor, and describe the shaft for the fan comes all the way through to this, which looks like a motor, but it's a 12 volt DC generator. Most of the electro-pneumatic organs in the United States operate from 12 volts DC positive ground. The reason for the positive ground is probably similar to the reason for it in automobiles. Uh, you could ask 10 people why positive ground and you'll get 10 different answers. It's very rare indeed that these motors are still, or these generators are still used. So this is a 12 volt generator that operates all the little electric solenoids and electric switches for every pipe and every rank that you cut in or cut off. Okay, Pastor, back to you. So the story goes, so that's still for our electrician, that still wasn't safe enough. So what John did, he said, you know, you've got to have a way to turn that circuit off without leaning across the organ motor. And so what he did was he established, he built this system with a pool cue, an old pool cue, so that if we need to reset the circuit breaker, you can just push the pool cue in and then have it come out. Oh, and by the way, he put in a circuit breaker, took off the old, uh, the old ancient fuse types that were in there, put a circuit breaker, and uh, so now we use the pool cue if we need to uh, reset the circuit breaker. Now, did this pool cue come from your personal collection, <laughs> yeah, from right. your past? Well, yeah, it was actually, I, I retired that one. That was from when I used to play down at Moby Dick's. Uh -huh. I think some of you must know Moby Dick's in downtown Minneapolis. Well, people are all over the world watching, so. Well, I had quite a reputation down there back in those days. Yes, I did. Being a pool shark, yes. And I imagine you were one great pool shark. Yep. But, um, and that's how you paid for your education to become a pastor. Well, I wasn't going to mention that to anybody, Phil, but... Uh, Oh well. <laughs> okay, so well, let's put that to the side. Okay. I can, still, I can still shoot a heck of a game of pool, though. Well, one of these days, you and I are going to have to try it out. We can yeah. have Ed here uh, <laughs> as the referee. How, how are you at it, Ed? Very bad. Uh oh, good. Well, then you could be the referee. All right, now, <laughs> so here's one end of the pool cue, and here's the other end of the pool cue carefully aligned to push in that circuit breaker. Now remember, it's not being used right now because the motor has been rebuilt and it's not drawing excessive current. Uh, now Ed sometimes gets pretty fancy and pulls out all the stops which creates an extra load, but that's okay. Ed can make a lot of noise with the organ and we don't need to use the pool cue anymore. Uh, now this chamber was put in long after the church was built and so what it is is it's in the basement in the old boiler room and it's just put together with plywood and uh, access points where they're needed and here's the instructions for the maintenance of the motor. Yeah, we'll have to update that because the motor was actually repaired and 
uh, taken out and repaired in 2016, and it has been serviced since then. We, we learned our lesson that uh, we need to have regular service of our Oregon Motors, so we get a regular service. That, uh, that's not an accurate date. And what was the story about the guy that helped you oh, get the motor uh, in and out? A, there's a, a motor repair place in, in North Minneapolis that some people might know. It's called Electric Motor Repair. Very familiar. And uh, they do very good work. They were willing to give us a good rate because we're a church. But we had the problem of how do you get this motor over to electric motor repair? This is a 300 pound motor. And so one of the employees at electric motor repair came over to look at how, what this job would entail, recognizing that this was a church organ motor. Uh, I believe his name was Marin, and he was from the Maronite Catholic Church in Northeast Minneapolis, and he worked for Electric Motor Repair. And he said, Pastor Dale, I will make sure that you, you get me a few men, and I will make sure we get this motor in and out without costing you any fees for moving it. And lo and behold, we did it. That's a 300-pound motor. Yes. <clears throat> and that's an open motor, and that's well ventilated, and these motors are very reliable. This is the original motor, right? I believe so, yeah. So this motor was built in 1950. Right. Okay. Now, here's some more instructions. Uh, one thing we always do is we paste instructions all over the place so people know. So anyway, now I'm going to start the motor. See that? What's that? Did you see that? No. It was a Shorts in the... Look at here. In the back of the motor, it was arcing and, and smoke. Watch. I'm not going to do it now. It's starting very slow. Okay. Well, I'm going to pause now and we're going to get to the rest of it on the other side of the wall. So anyway, here we are right above the organ blower and Ed is going to describe what happens to the air now, the wind. Ed, begin with this. This is the main line coming up through the basement floor into this room which is part of the sacristy. Okay? Okay, the wind comes up this big huge pipe and then it's branched out. This one is going to go to the swell chamber, which we'll explain further upstairs. And this is going to go to the great and choir section, which we'll explain upstairs. But this little, little pipe that goes here to this regulator, and when I play the organ, it'll be bouncing up and down. And that supplies the organ console with power. So with, uh, with the wind pressure, and this is a regulator that sets the wind pressure at four inches water column. Correct? Right. Okay. So this is the wind that goes into the organ console that operates pistons that turn all of the ranks on or off. You've heard the expression, pull out all the stops, meaning pull the stops on the organ to turn on every rank of pipes. Okay, so now the main wind pressure, this goes to the great organ, correct? Great and choir, yes. The great and the choir divisions of the organ. Through the wall. Remember, this organ was installed after the church was built. The church was built in 1906. The organ was installed in 1950. So we go through walls, we cut holes, and here we are in the back room, and this is now where the wind goes up to the great division of the organ.
I thought you might be interested in seeing that here we still have some of the original light fixtures. And you see we have radiators, steam radiators in every room in the building. These buildings were built to be warm and comfortable. They were heated by coal. When in 1922, when the steam heating system was installed, coal was $22 a ton. We're going to go into the great organ chamber now, the great division, and and it's going to show us where the wind pipe comes up into the reservoir. Okay, Ed. I think you and Dale would be better clean up that agile. Swing that door wide open, Ed. That's it. Now we're going to enter the great organ shaper. And in here, I'll turn the lights up here. In here we can see the air reservoirs and the wind pressure regulators here. We don't see the big pipe coming in right here, but it doesn't matter. You can see back in there, there's regulators for the great organ and what other division here? Choir. The choir division and the great division. And on a previous video, we showed you the pipes. Here's a nice little rank. What, what rank is this one, Ed? Uh, sitting, that I'm not sure. Sitting up here all by itself with its own wind source. See this? And here's the electric wiring. There's one electric wire that goes to a valve under each of these pipes. Could be the wind Marius? Well, I don't know. Let's see what this is. Here's the official paperwork, which doesn't show very well because the light is glaring on it. There we go. I'll try to hold it steady so you folks can hit your pause button if you want. But this is instructions for the proper care of this organ. Okay, that's it for this session. The chamber? No, we did that last night. Right now I'm giving you an organist view of the sanctuary. The main floor, this is the front of the church building facing Emerson Avenue. And this is the balcony. This balcony was added in the late 20s due to increased membership. The church sanctuary was fully occupied, so the church voted to install a balcony. Since the lights aren't on, it's not that easy to see it. And this is the front of the church. These are the windows you see from outside. And over here is Ed, the organ master. And this is the area the choir occupies. Right below this is the altar. Okay, Ed, you wanted to show us things now about the council and pulling out the stop. Right. Um, let's say in a service that I, I just finished the prelude 
and I'm playing something very, very soft. And it's just been announced we're going to sing the opening hymn. Rather okay, we, we can't hear you when you're playing, so. Okay, so I, we just finished the prelude, and Pastor has just announced the opening hymn. Rather than grabbing all these stops by hand, I'm going to push a button that will do it all for me. Okay, now this is what's called a programmable piston system. The pistons are what actually move the stops in and out. Do you want to move that switch? Sure. You can see. Go ahead, Ed. All right, now when he pushes a pre-programmed button, which this one is number three, and he marks on his music sheet when and where to push which button. So these can all be programmed. And you see how each, it's a little difficult to see, let me, let's, okay. All right, so let me get back here. And what else, Ed? Um, if you want to see the current light to let me know that the motor is running, that's right here. We have three lights that are warning systems for the organist. One is the current, the motor is on. Then there's a little green light here. And that means the crescendo pedal is in use. And the crescendo pedal slowly adds stops that I don't have time to pull with my hands. I can do it with my feet. And the organ has a, a quick stop to put every stop on immediately. And there's two ways of doing it. One is with the finger and you get the red light, or you can do it with the toe stud on the bottom. And that's called the... Sforzando. Sforzando, it's something like Schwarzando, only it's Sforzando. Yep. Okay, good, all right. So okay, we just finished the prelude, the pastor announced the opening hymn. So rather than pull out all these stops, just push the button and we're ready to go. that beautiful folks. Okay. Okay. You want to move back over there now briefly? Stand in front of that open book again now. I want to, I, I moved the camera. Okay.
with Rest Me on the River, then right. you're going to go back and play Jill My Rapture's also fine to end the song. And you said play it, uh, end uh, loud, ends of loud. <laughs>
Let's hear it. Er, that's a wrap, huh? Okay. Yeah. Oh, hey, Ruben. Okay. Uh, twice as. Okay. It's done. Uh, thank you. Ed? Thank you, Pastor Dale. And say goodbye to our audience. Bless old man fellow with Ed and Pastor Dale. God bless.